<coughs> right, well, a bit more on the valve amp, the Duke Audio Kit. So, I'm not going to a great deal on the final build. So, just some bits and bobs. You can see I've got the camera in my hand. So, heater wiring. It's on in a minute, so I've got to be very careful with my fingers. So, I wired it up. There's two outputs on the transformer. There's a 6.3 single winding and a dual 3.15 with a centre tap. So, the centre tap of the dual 3.15 is coming up on. Let me turn this fucker off. There's fingers, fingers, fingers. So, it's coming up on this brown and white, brown and blue, coming across to both the input bars, that's all that one's feeding. You see twisted together wire, I ended up using some uh, mains core wire out of something, I couldn't be asked to get the super good stuff out. Uh, the zero volt tapping on that transformer is connecting to this ground point on the board here. That's for the input heaters. The output valves, they connect straight to the 6.3 volt wiring, that's coming across on one two separate runs coming up to the 6.3 volt winding on the transformer and that really feeds across to so it's in two parallel pairs it takes a bit of load off the wiring the single winding still needs a zero volt reference to stop noise and stuff getting through so it's got a 10 ohm resistor on each side of it going to the zero v point which is coming back and sharing this same wire so both um, heater supplies are ground reference, one centre tap, one's uh, dual resistor to zero V. Earthing straight to this point here, to the chassis there, chassis earth going up to IEC socket earth. As I said, look, the feedback path for the speaker terminals is connecting, going along this long white, this black wire here. And it's connecting right up here near the input sockets. I scratched a bit of silk screen off the board. Feedback wires go here and here under here. I messed it up for some reason. I originally soldered them into uh, like different size holes on this board for different size caps, and for some reason I soldered them there. Basically, I was feeding the input feedback straight to the input. Bad idea. This is working well. My separate bias thing for each valve. Uh, I've got some Russian valves in it, some, not them, the 6P6S which are a clone of a 6V6 I believe, yes. The ones that came with it were junk, they were all over the place, one of them was knackered, it was just making like a loud clicking, cracking noises, it was slowly arcing over inside. So I've kept the other three, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, well I've kept all of them in a minute, I, don't know, I might just destroy them at some point, I don't know, maybe they'll come in handy for testing a knackered guitar amp or something, who knows, but yeah, cheap Chinese valve said they weren't messing with, so worth messing with, so it's now running a full complement of Russian valves, the ones it came with, the 6N, what are they, 6N9S inputs, which are like a 6SL7 or something, and the 6v6 clone outputs genuine 1980 vintage and these are 85 I think the input valves as for the power simple rules build an amplifier keep your signal wire short keep your mains wiring short and keep your mains wiring away from your signal wiring and it seems to be a thing on kit amps and commercial amps they bring the main socket in and they put the power switch this side so they put the main socket there and you have to run it across and to there, A it lengthens the wire, they put the input socket there and then run it across to here, it lengthens the wire, but then ultimately you're crossing your mains and your signal wiring, you just don't do it. So I didn't want the mains wiring coming up anywhere into this chassis, so yeah, by the way, cover up those bare connectors children. So I have taken the power switch which was meant to go here. I've drilled out a small hole in the case, I put a power switch in there so it's just switching the live, it goes straight up to the app, the uh, mains transformer and the, there's a 5mm LED or 3mm, well, yes, it's a 5mm, no it's a 3mm, yeah 3mm LED bezel holder uh, now sits where the power switch originally was and it's just wired up via, it's got a resistor in it 
It's got like a 680 ohm, 620 ohm resistor. It's going to one of the 6.3 volt AC supplies. Then it's got a diode sitting across the LED to stop reverse voltage from damaging the diode. Job done. Now, I ended up using the power supply cuts there because the ones I had were only the same rating. They were just slightly bigger, better quality cuts. So I sort of sod it. I'll just use what they've got. Uh, so yeah, my, and most of what's come with it, I, they've, I've used some of it's my wiring I've found in other things. Um, yeah, the I managed to scratch the annoying wiring off the impedance selection switch. It's really straightforward wiring this up where it says uh, output four and eight. You connect four to number four on the output transform eight to eight, and the ground connects to ground. You can see I've ended up with sort of making a star ground. It's a bit how you doing, but yeah, both the speaker zero volts return to this star ground, both the output transformer zero V points turn to this, and then as I said it comes along this black wire and it brings the feedback signal right up to the input where it's wanted, it doesn't mix it with the, you know, any current that's coming on the heater loop and the ground and everything else, you want to stay well away from that. So yeah, it's all finished, it's all working, it's... It's a cheap Chinese valve amplifier kit, that's all I can say about it, really. Um, I could tie it with some wiring with some cable ties and stuff if I want, but to be honest, I don't know if I can be bothered, it's, you know... I didn't bother, I should have took some video of the wiring on the output transformers and main transform, but I was kind of rushed it because I got these two power supplies I've just ordered a load of caps for. They were getting dropped off that day. This was still sat on the bench. That was the last thing I'm doing to it was the wiring on the output transformer and mains transformer. So I just quickly slammed it on there, literally tested, turned it on with a load on it with the oscilloscope on after I realised what I'd done with the feedback windings. Put my speakers up to it and sure enough, click, 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 click in one speaker once it started to warm up. Turned it off, put it on the floor and said I'll investigate that once I got those power supplies out of the way, which I have. It was just output valves, which you'd expect on a brand new amp, you wouldn't expect it to be dodgy resistors and caps. Not impossible, but unlikely. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Cheap Chinese valve amplifier. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. Probably run it somewhere whilst keeping my eye on it, so when it catches, I mean, if it ca I mean, when it catches fire, <laughs> I, I can chuck it out the window or something, I don't know. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I guess it was just, uh easy enough to build, straightforward enough, resistors were too big for the board really, sod all instructions on the wiring or anything, so I had to get creative there, and a few other notes I can't remember now that I know I put in the video, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, I upped these capacitors for the, they were something to do with the feedback, I can't remember, um, yeah I can't remember, could have used bigger caps in the end, I ended up using uh, what size were these? They weren't massive, they were only like yeah, 100 microfarads because I wasn't sure of the voltage I'd have on them. Well, the Chinese valves and my 6V6s with each valve when the cathodes are separated has got 540 ohms now in its cathode circuit and that's in parallel with a 100 mic capacitor and they just about sit bang on 20 volts so a 35 volt cap would do quite happily there. Um, but if I put the bigger caps I've got on here, I doubt I'd have been able to fit them in the board. 100 mics more than enough for this style of amp. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad from the top end, upside down at the minute. But yeah, it's um, cheap Chinese amp. So yeah, I'm going to have a listen to it now. And yeah, I guess if you've actually genuinely been watching this and we're waiting for the next instalment, I, this is a bit of an anticlimax because... It sort of jumps a few stages, but like I said, it was hot, it was sticky. Uh, changed hours at work and everything. I'm trying to get some motorcycling in and socialising and, you know, uh, it just kind of got put on the back burner until it needed to get out of the way and it was very quickly over the space of a few days. Bits and bobs were done on it without spending any of the time filming it until I got to this stage. So, yeah, if you was wanting more, I apologise about that, but... Weather will be cooling down in a month or two and I shall be back up in here tinkering again. I've decided I'm going to do a bit more of a formal video on mending those power supplies as, you know, might as well, aren't I? But anyway, as always, thanks for watching and catch you next time.